I'm here to see Socrates. Cassandra! You know who I am? Of course I do. Socrates never stops talking about you. And you are? His wife, of course. I'm Xantippe. Socrates never told me he had a wife. Hm, typical. The only time he's quiet is when he's eating. Yet he can't find time to mention me. So where is Socrates? I got a note that said to meet him here. That's what I'd like to know. He went to another symposium last night, and he didn't come home after. Sounds like a good place to start looking. I was just about to head there myself. Come, keep me company. How long have you and Socrates been married? It's been quite some time now. What is it about him that you love so much? Love is not a word I'd use. It frustrates me to no end. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Even so, it's worth the frustration. His mind is like no other. Not to mention, he's quite a good lover. That is not something I wanted to picture. It must be why Kibiadi seems so infatuated with you. Don't mention that name around me. Always coming by drunk, sending Socrates gifts like giant cakes. I didn't know. It's fine. Xantippe! What is it? Socrates. They took him away. They said he was under arrest. For what? I have no idea. We were just talking after the symposium. I'd say go ask him yourself, but he'll be guarded. They took him southeast of here. That fool! I knew this would happen to him one day. I'll find him. Don't worry. This is his doing. It's best to let these things run their course. I can't believe Socrates was arrested. I need to find out what happened.
Hardly heard something over there. Someone trying to get my attention? that noise. Grant me wisdom. <laughs>
Cassandra, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same. Well, here I am. Though I'm more curious about how you are here. The gods let you in? We've known each other a long time now. You know how I got in here. You've taught me that the blade can sometimes be necessary. But I don't think this was one of those times. I was worried about you. Your care is appreciated, but if you had waited only a bit longer, I'm sure my trial would have taken place and I'd be free. You're not going to trial. We're getting you out of here. I understand your concern, but what good would escaping do other than prove I'm guilty? No. In fact, I'm looking forward to this trial. You would go to trial just to prove you can convince them of your innocence? Exactly. You have your ways to find excitement, and I have mine. What were you arrested for? I haven't the slightest idea. And that doesn't bother you? Sometimes understanding does not come at the moment we would like. More importantly, this is giving me the necessary time to think. About? I went to see the Pythia, and she told me there is none wiser than me. An intriguing thought, and one I've been unable to stop thinking about. Socrates, the Pythia is... It matters not what you believe she is or she isn't. I must examine not only her words, but my own self as well. I know nothing, so how could I be called wise? What does that have to do with being locked up? I believe my time here and this trial may help me find the answer. I will be fine. Trust me. I've known you for a while now. That's true. And you'd call us friends? I would. And friends share important things with one another. Is that so? It is. Then how did I not know you were married? I, uh... From what you just said, that means either we're not friends, or that friends don't share with one another. So, which is it? <laughs> I've wondered how much of our conversation you've taken to heart. And now, I have my answer. Were you doing anything when you got arrested? If speaking my mind is worth imprisonment, then I suppose I was. In the future, you may want to be more careful. You risk life and limb every time you draw your blade. Just because it's my tongue that is sharp, doesn't mean I'm not prepared to face the consequences of using it. Since you won't leave with me, I'll go see the Pythia myself. That's not necessary. I'll find out why she told you that. I won't let you go to trial, even if you think you'll be found innocent. Ah, Cassandra, you... I'll come back when I have what I need. You remember me? Just go. I'm too old for this. No! No! Marta! No! No! No!
blood when you go upstairs. You again? I'm here for a different reason. After last time, they tortured me. I thought they were going to kill me, just like I told you. It hurt so badly. I begged for death. I didn't mean for that to happen. Just hurry and tell me what you want. You told Socrates something, and I want to know why. <laughs> Questioning why the Pythia speaks is a strange thing. I know why you speak, and I know who controls your voice. Tell me why the cult had you tell Socrates he's the wisest. The cult didn't tell me to say that. I did that on my own. The cult wouldn't allow you to do that. Which is why I was very careful. I seek Socrates as an ally, but simply asking him to help wouldn't have worked. An ally for what? I know much of Socrates. Not only has he visited me often, but his students do as well. Get to the point. You know the gods don't speak through me. I feel Socrates is the one who can convince others of this. If he succeeds, the cult will have no more need for me. So you're hoping he comes to the conclusion that the gods don't exist? It matters not if Socrates believes they exist. He needs simply to doubt that the gods speak through me. I understand why you think Socrates can help, but why tell him he is the wisest? He'll delve into what it means to be wisest. It's my hope he'll conclude he's not, and therefore doubt the words of the gods. If you just told him your words aren't from the gods, wouldn't that serve the same purpose? And much quicker? Socrates is not the type to desire the answer so easily. He'll have more drive when he finds the answer on his own. This is getting complicated. Whatever you do, you can't tell Socrates. I understand. He has to come to the answer on his own. Exactly. Although, if you truly wish to help Socrates, a student of his came by not long before you. He seemed... distraught. Distraught? He was clutching a book tightly to his chest and kept looking over his shoulder. He told me he was going into a tomb nearby until things were safe. Thank you. I'll find him. Find the boy and take the papyrus. 
sorry for sharing my fear of tombs with you. What was that? to be scared now. I'm not with them. That doesn't mean you won't kill me. You just want this for yourself. I'm a friend of Socrates. You are? Prove it. Socrates is one of the most frustrating people I've ever known. He just talks and talks and talks. And it feels like he asks questions just so he can continue talking and talking and talking. What you call frustrating, I call brilliant. But it's clear you know him well. <laughs> Why were those men after you? For some reason, they wanted these writings of Socrates's. Well, I wrote them, but it's all his words. That seems like a strange thing to want. One of them had a big mouth. He mentioned something about the priest at the sanctuary of Athena Pronea. He said this was the final thing they needed to get rid of Socrates. I've always been curious. What does Socrates teach you? So much. Follow him around for an entire day and you won't be able to sleep. Your mind will be so aflutter with thoughts. I'm not sure I'd last a whole day with him. What drew you to Socrates? I've never met a man like him and I don't think I ever will again. Every day with him is one worth waking up for. I'll take care of the priests. Thank you. And... well... Please, give this to Socrates. It hurts me to say this after all I've learned from him, but I have a family. I can't risk being caught up in whatever this is. So you're going to stop being his student? It feels I have no choice. Maybe one day that will change. I'll be sure to give him the writings. Thank you. Make sure he stays safe. The world will be a worse place without him in it. That student gave me an idea. Xanthippe said there was a symposium. Maybe I can convince the others who were there to help Socrates. I'm not sure why the priests want Socrates gone, but I need to take care of them.
Maybe I can convince them to stand up for Socrates at the trial. It's as Xenophani said, of course. We have given the gods human forms because we wish them to be as we are. No, they are as they are. Who are we to give form to the gods? Exactly my point. As he said, if oxen or horses or any beast could produce art as we do, they would form the gods in the image of themselves. Yes, what well, they can't. And you've simply shown me again why Xenophanes is problematic. Come now, don't be like that. It's okay to be wrong. Huh? Sometimes. Ah, I wouldn't know what that's like. Do not students take what they learn from their teachers? What then if the teacher is wrong? Does that not simply perpetuate these wrong teachings amongst future generations? You assume the students aren't wise enough to understand the flaws of the teacher. Think of those who came before us. First Thales, then his student Anaximandros, and then Anaximenes. Without the teachings of those before him, it's safe to say Anaximenes would not have reached the conclusions he did. I don't think that's true at all. Oh, perhaps this new phase can offer a different perspective. A student gets to take all the knowledge of their teacher without needing to come up with answers themselves. If they're smart, they should surpass those they studied under. An astute observation. The time saved by receiving the knowledge allows the student not only to expand on the ideas, but to come up with more of their own. But what if the student expands on ideas without first seeking the truth behind them? If we listen to others and take what they say as fact, we have only ourselves to blame. So, no matter who is speaking, student or teacher, we must spend time trying to understand if what they say is even true. Your appearance betrays you, Mystius. Clearly, you've taken on a teacher of your own. Something like that. He's the reason I'm here. Socrates needs your help. Socrates? Ha! If it's another debate you want, it will be hard for us to decide who hates that man more. Why would we help him? It doesn't matter if he's your worst enemy. If they're willing to imprison someone like Socrates only for his words, what's to say they won't do the same to you? So, you want us to help out of fear of being imprisoned ourselves? I don't care why you help. If I hadn't said his name, would you think it was right Socrates was locked up? If it's as you say, and it was for his words, then no. And aren't you afraid it could happen to you too? Of course. If we can't speak our minds, what else are we to do? If you believe that, then you should help. Fine, fine. You've made your point, and you've made it well. Socrates deserves our help, but we don't give it lightly. That makes it worth even more. We'll be on our way then. We'll gather some others as well. Make sure our voices are heard. Believe it or not, we're pretty good at causing a scene. If you're like Socrates, that's not hard to believe. Wow, I've never seen someone convince them so easily before. Is that so? I guess I should feel proud. I'm surprised to see a child here. Is there an age at which it would suddenly be okay to debate with them? What then of the night before I turn that age? Should we be prevented from doing what we wish due to the world's view of us? I regret doubting you at all. Thank you. There are few things greater than gaining the understanding of another. On that, we disagree. Disagreements can lead to even more understanding. You're the first kid I've met who'd rather debate than play. Don't tell the others. But I'm envious that you're a student of Socrates. I hope one day to be as well. You're on the right path. What's your name? Aristocles. Although I've never liked that name much. It does sound like countless others I've heard around Athens. Why not choose another? I can do that? Huh. My brother always had a problem saying my name. So he called me Plato instead. Perhaps I'll use that. I like it. Thank you. Well, I better hurry after the others. Here. Pafse parafta. Posoro destino ran.
Don't go anywhere. <sighs> Son Arcacerdo. Ugh! <laughs> 
Those priests must be the ones who hired the thugs and want to get rid of Socrates. Oh! Now that all the priests are dead, they won't be able to testify against Socrates. I should return to Socrates before the trial starts. Socrates, you're... here. I am. What happened? The trial couldn't have taken place that quickly. Had I been given the chance to defend myself, it would have been quick indeed. But unfortunately for me, I was let free before I could. That's good news. Apparently, those who had charges to bring against me were found dead. And evidence they claimed to have went missing. It sounds like someone was looking out for you. There were also some people protesting my arrest, I was told. I have to ask, did you have something to do with this? Do you really need to ask? No, but you still deserve the chance to answer. Did you have time to find an answer for the Pythia's words? I thought it would have taken much longer than it did, but the moment I stopped thinking about it, it came to me like a flash of Zeus's lightning. So, do you agree with Pythia or not? The gods cannot lie. Yet, I know that I know nothing. I had to understand what it meant for one who knows nothing to be called wise. I realized that though the Pythia said my name, she did not mean me. Who did she mean then? That is not an answer I'd yet like to voice. It's one that people may not want to hear, and I must think on how I wish to share my new beliefs with Athens. Whatever it is, be careful. I don't want to find you've been arrested again. I should get you home. I'm sure you'll be more comfortable there. In some ways, that will be true. In others, well, Kathanthipi will decide that. Being free feels good, but I don't believe Kathanthipi will be happy with me. She has a good reason to be mad this time. We argue often about how I need to be careful with what I say and what I said. This will only give her more cause to bring it up. That doesn't sound very fun. Oh, you misunderstand. I love it. You do? People see Kathanthipi and believe it is her beauty that drew me to her. But it is her argumentative spirit I lost for. Nobody ever likes that about me. Having my opinions and thoughts challenged helps me to refine them and to grow as a person. And she likes these arguments? Oh, I doubt it. But it is in those fiery moments that her spirit is strongest, like an untamed horse. Don't call her a horse to her face. I'm afraid your advice is a bit too late. Get somewhere safe, Scott. Uh, 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 uh,
Anything else happens. You came back. Finally. I'm ready to return to Athens. I've had enough of Phokis and his talk of the Pythia. You will be happy to hear I have no need for her words any longer. Ah, then something positive came out of this after all. I just remembered. A student of yours has been taking notes of your teachings. He wanted you to have them. Nobody asked him to write down my words. Even so, why not keep it? Share it with others. Because of the story I was told as a boy. All right, let's hear it. The king of Egypt, Thamos, was visited by the god Thephtha. Thephtha offered the invention of writing to the king and told him it was an elixir of memory and wisdom. But Thamos disagreed. He believed the people would no longer use their memories. For they would simply read instead. These written words would not offer true wisdom, but only the appearance of such. You don't want your own words written down, so others can't use them to pretend to be smart. Much like creatures in a painting, the words sit there unmoving. If you ask them a question, they will preserve a solemn silence. And no matter how many times you ask, they will only ever say the same thing. They cannot defend their message. That's the part you like. The defense of your words. All who speak should defend their words if questioned about them. That is why I choose to speak and not write. That is why any words of mine that last beyond my final breath will be those that people choose to remember. Those words will be true wisdom and not an illusion. What's your plan now? After I return to Athens, there's much I need to consider. You'll be careful, right? If I have to choose between saying nothing and staying safe, or speaking up and risking my life, the choice is easy. I should get going. I'm glad you're free. As am I, although if you allow me, there is something. I doubt I could stop you. We like to believe that action means progress, but it's control that's so truly desired. The more we do, the more control it seems we have, but the less we allow for others. If we grip too tightly, we'll find we've crushed what it is we're holding on to. Meaning? Meaning we must sometimes let life unfold without trying to influence the outcome. I'll keep that in mind. I almost forgot. 
In your letter, you said you had something to ask me. What was it? You know, <laughs> I've completely forgotten now. Take care, Cassandra. Stay out of trouble, Socrates.